All right, guys, I got Sean Wells, my very, very good friend here and very honored to call him a good friend because Sean is one of the best in the biz, in my opinion, and in the opinion of most in the, in the area, especially of formulation. Um, we call him the LeBron James of formulators. He is an OG in this space. He's been doing this for a very long time and he's expert level at it. So we're going to start with that. He, Sean, you have, he has so much more. Sean, you're one of those people that's like, ah, like which area of expertise do we go with today? <laughs> Let's go the formulation route or or we could go the keto route or we just general nutrition route or we can go mindset or biohacking or <laughs> there's so many areas we can go but let's start out with formulation um you've recently rebranded yourself as ingredientologist on instagram so do you mind sharing your background with ingredients and formulation how you got started and then we'll get into kind of some of the cool secrets that you know if that's okay yeah, yeah, for sure. And and I decided to do the uh, ingredientologist thing first. Like I've been known as the world's greatest formulator and some people think that's arrogant, but I was <laughs> dubbed that by the industry. And, you know, that's up for debate like that. That just that I just take that as a title that means like I've been around, like you said, I've done, you know, 500 products. I've done, you know, 20 different patents. Like I've I've ran supplement companies. I've I've helped sell supplement companies. I I do the marketing, like uh, you know, and the branding, and and helped companies rebrand and get ready for sale. And uh, I've done international markets, and um, you know, all kinds of things. You, you know, so it's like it's I I think on a broad level, like that's what the title meant. But I like this ingredientologist thing because I'm a scientist of ingredients and I want to educate people on all the things I'm doing. Yes, I've done supplements, but I've also done food and beverage and household cleaners and cosmeceuticals and anti-aging serums and, you know, all kinds of things. And, and like right now, like on Instagram, I'm talking about anti-nutrients and gluten. And, you know, I want to go through ingredients. I want to be that scientist of ingredients. So I thought it, it kind of took me out of that box and, and also just uh, opened the door for people to understand ingredients better and what you should be consuming and what can give you a better life. So yeah, that's my area of expertise. And, uh, and that's the reason for ingredientologist. Mm -hmm. right. um, yeah. Let me have you back up. I'm going to, if you don't mind, because I want them to get a good feel for your, where you started in the industry. Would you mind sure. sharing your experience? Like, working in college, your college experience with your counselor, if you don't mind, and then going yeah, yeah. into working in, you know, in nursing care and your background. So they understand that you've been through the ranks. Like you didn't just show up and you're like, Hey, I know science. I'll make some supplements. Like you have been through it, been through the thick of it with people. Can you share that story? I think it's so inspiring. Yeah. You know, I, I grew up uh, with a difficult uh, childhood and, and I think you can relate and, and many listeners can relate. And I've talked about suicide and depression and, and a lot of those kind of aspects. And, and I think that resonates, but like I, I grew up uh, obese and bullied and chaotic home. Uh, I've been as much as 300 pounds at six foot two and uh, was a junk food junkie and you know, I, I had a hard time. I was never the guy to get the girl. I was never the guy to make the team. Uh, I was laughed at, you know, all the time. And uh, I ended up getting in a good uh, business school, Babson, for business specialty and, and doing marketing, which has come in very handy for me. But uh, it was about my sophomore year. I started working out and taking creatine and protein. And in between my sophomore and junior year, I went to the doctor uh, to get a routine physical and I was telling him about my passion and and you know he kind of lit up and I didn't expect this from him not at all like if anything I expected a doctor to kind of laugh at me and say this is all stupid and like most people do like honestly when I was talking about supplements at the time you know they most people thought like yeah that's dumb like obviously you know do business and I was planning on a life like of doing consulting in business, like with, you know, one of these Anderson consulting KPMG, like these big companies and, you know, to someday make a six figure salary and, and drive a European sports car or something. And, mm -hmm. but this guy like looked at me and he drew out this lifeline from 20 to 80. I was 20 at the time. 
And he said, why not be happy between here and here? And he literally gave me permission to pursue my passion. Mm -hmm. And I will encourage anyone, one, your words can profoundly impact anyone, their life path radically, whether you realize it or not. Just one small statement can change their life path like it did Mm -hmm. for me. Two, I wouldn't be talking to you right now. I wouldn't have been on stages, documentaries, TV, met all the people I've met, maybe have people not commit suicide. Maybe I would have committed suicide. You know, like, I mean, there's, there's so many things that because I got to pursue my passion and this, this person gave me permission, it wasn't even someone close in my life that that was a game changer for me. And I decided to do that. And uh, I ended up finishing my degree. Um, You know, I thought that made sense. I finished uh, well, magna cum laude. And, but I needed about two years of like 26 credit hours a semester of straight sciences to get into my dream school of Chapel Hill. My parents were down in North Carolina. And I ended up going to a guidance counselor at UNC Greensboro and telling him my dream uh, that I'd been holding on to so passionately for two years. And he laughed at me and he told me that you're a business student, you'll fail and you'll fail miserably and you're not even in that good of shape. And I left his office that day and I had a bottle of vodka and a bottle of Tylenol. And I thought about just taking my life again, because I had been holding on to a dream, this passion that this one doctor gave me. And, and this other person, again, had no idea that he almost took my life and not only took my dream away from me, but almost took my life. And it ended up giving me a lot of resolve. I ended up not killing myself. And I actually thought about his words many, many times a day, like unhealthy amount of times a day, like hatred almost fueled me for two years. Like when people ask me, like, you know, are you studying for the test? Like, I'm, I'm ready. Like, you know, are you going to go out drinking? No, I'm like, I'm like, this is all I have my focus Mm -hmm. on. It's like proving this motherfucker wrong. Mm -hmm. And I knew he had taken other people's dreams probably too, but uh, I literally thought about him every day and I got straight A's and I got into Chapel Hill and and I was blessed for that. But you know, like that's, it's something that sticks in my head that like you, your words can have the power to, to make and break other people's dreams. And these, two guys had no idea like the impact they were making on me. You know, there's two seemingly random people. um, But yes, certainly powerful. You know, what's so interesting about that is like, you're such a high achiever and I have heard this so many times. Mm -hmm. I feel like so many high achievers start out with an unhealthy motivation. Like they want to prove somebody wrong or they've got really low self-esteem and they got to prove to everybody that they're worth something and valuable and have a place. But I actually think that that can happen by design sometimes to light a fire Mm -hmm. under us and get us to where we want to go. And then you can heal as you go, right? Like you can go on your healing journey. But I think that sometimes those unhealthy drivers, they're a little bit of a gift, you know, to get us on our path. And then you just, you, you mold and move on from there. And I've seen that in you, you know, like, I mean, look what's happened as a result. No, No, for sure. Like, I mean, you know, it's like, uh, you know, Michael Jordan, like, didn't didn't make the team, like, his first year, and his brother was always, like, tough on him and, like, playing him hard, and he'd lose to his brother. You know, like, it, absolutely, there's that, – that creates a fire inside. And I've been in a number of masterminds with people that are worth, you know, millions to billions of dollars that, you know, break down in tears because of, you know, similar things like you're saying – you know, that, that they were abused, that they were molested, that they were uh, just bullied and and never felt good enough and still don't and still struggle. And, you know, I've seen so many guys crying, like when 
you know, they're opening up, but they're just, you know, like you said, incredibly high achievers. And I think you're right. Like, that's what we do is like, we, we work, we work, we work. Like nobody can outwork me, Tara. No one. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, like I work, like you can have passion, but you're not going to work 80 hours a week. You can work 80 hours a week, but you don't have the passion. It's like somebody like, I'm going to be a doctor and like they burn out because they went to be a doctor so that they could make money. They went to right. be a doctor so they could get, you know, uh, validation. Right. But like I wanted to be the best formulator in the world and I fucking did it. <laughs> like I realized yeah. that. And like, I'm actually super proud. Like it is like the most niche thing that you could possibly imagine. Like, <laughs> like I could, I could say like, I want to be an actor in Hollywood and there's more actors in Hollywood than there are formulators, especially like at my level. So yeah. it's kind of a crazy dream. And I did it. And yeah. I did it because like all my free time went to this. Like every waking hour went to this. Like I would mm -hmm. be reading the magazines. I was reading the books. Like I would be in a GNC for four or five hours, reading the <laughs> labels, talking to the people, asking them questions. And then I'd be on message boards, reading and helping people out on the message boards, never getting paid a dime. And then I was like working at these uh, shows like the Olympia and the uh, Europa's and the Arnold and whatever, setting up booths for free just so I could get some supplements, just so I could talk to these people, just so I could be in the industry you know, I worked literally every holiday, every weekend, every night. I didn't have a vacation after I graduated until 10 years in. Wow. Because I was just nonstop. This was my dream. And then once I got on with like Dimatize actually in the industry, I was still working like 80 hours. Like yeah. before that, like you were talking about, you know, I was a chief clinical dietitian. That's what I had to do. Um, and there's some, certainly some frustrating parts to that, like with, you know, you're putting people on low fat diets and, you know, taking away their sodium and putting people on carbs all day long that have diabetes and all this nonsense. It's just <laughs> maddening, but yes. literally that you can get sued for or your license taken away. People don't even realize like, how intense it is. Like, you know, there's JCO in hospitals and then there's state and federal survey teams that come in and nursing homes and there's massive lawsuits and it's scary. Uh, so like, I mean, every order you have is questioned. Uh, like, why did you do this with this patient? It's intense. So, yeah. like, you know, like I, I decided to, to walk away from that and then yeah. that's when I got that job with Dimatize. But to take a step back, like actually what gave me a lot of my resolve, like was halfway through um, uh, my time at Chapel Hill when I was getting my master's in nutritional biochemistry, I ended up getting a slew of autoimmune issues. I had strep throat, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, Epstein-Barr, Hashimoto's, like my body was just shutting down. And I could not get out of bed. I was inflamed. I was in pain again, considering suicide because I thought my dream was over and God was taking this away from me. Mm. And this is so cruel. And I ended up discovering keto, uh, you know, one by looking online to reading this book by Lyle McDonald and another book by Dan Duchesne. And that, that gave me a way out. Like it actually took away a lot of the inflammation and pain. And that's like, I started keto over 20 years ago and, and then, you know, getting into supplements that would help my immune system. But part of this was, I think me still being so hard on myself, I became anorexic. I got to 150 pounds instead of 300 pounds. And I was like weighing myself uh, like after I would pee just mm. to see if I was a little bit lighter. Wow. And then I was orthorexic where I was working out four hours a day because I was finally getting attention. Right. And, you know, then I was taking like pro hormones and ephedrine and, you know, himbine and blah, blah, wow. blah to cut and build. And yeah, 
I was just like destroying myself, like just nonstop. And then, you know, like I'd sometimes go out and drink or, you know, whatever. And, and I was trying to study and you know get a master's. And this was just so extreme, like yeah. literally what I was putting myself through that my body was just dying. Wow. And, uh, and luckily, you know, I found um, some interventions, but it's taken me a long time to work on the mindset piece. You know, I was always seeking, you know, the diet, the pills, the exercise, the, you know, the quick fix, the surgery, the whatever. And, you know, I've, I've had so many issues and, you know, eight years ago I had a pituitary tumor and that's when I decided to get super serious about kind of the, you know, the biohacking, the, the looking at like allergies and, and being strict about, you know, eating whole food, more primal, um, paleo doing keto more strictly because it was really hard 20 years ago. Like I was, you know, on and off just because it was difficult. Right. Because no one else was doing it. And like, you know, you just, there wasn't the snacks and the recipes and the this and the <laughs> Right. Uh, like there is now. And, and, um, and then doing intermittent fasting as well. And like, so that helped me like really lock things in, but it's, it's been a journey and I'm still on that journey. Um, I'll have you know, like, I mean, I still battle depression and body dysmorphia and, you know, I'm at a pretty healthy place in terms of my weight. Like I'm about 215 at 6'2", 6'3", and, you know, I, I work out and... Yeah, you uh, look amazing, Sean. <laughs> Sean's <well>, ripped. <laughs> thank you. Like, I mean, I try, like, I, I, I try to not get caught up in, like, the six-pack thing. The look, anymore. I know, but... I'm just um, and I do try and, like... <laughs> focus on like, um, you know, longevity, like yeah. really longevity, like, and something that's maintainable and not beat myself up if like, because I'm traveling, because I didn't work out because, you know, maybe I let my diet slip because I was in some business meetings and I was in Brazil and we had to, you know, have these drinks and this food and I come right. back pounds heavier. I'm like, it's okay, Sean, you know, it's a lifetime. It's yeah. a lifetime, buddy. It's a lifetime. It's no big deal. Like, you know, four weeks later, you'll be back to where you want to be. No big deal. I love yeah. that you share this so vulnerably because I think they're so, it's so refreshing because this is why, like, I always tell people, I'm like, oh, do you know who Sean Wells is? You don't know who Sean Wells is? I'm like, Sean's like the guy behind the guy. Like, Sean is the guy that if I have a keto question, you are the guy that I go to. If I have a biochemistry question, you're the guy I go to. Biohacking, you got it. Like, Sean, you're there. And so it's so cool because the reason you're so good and you're so knowledgeable is because, like you said, it's bred out of your own desire, your own need, your own curiosity, right? And so that's so cool. That's like, we need more of that in the industry of saying, like, I'm still struggling with this. And guess what? That's what makes me so hungry to find answers. So if you want to like come on this journey with me, like this is what I'm dealing with. And I love that. I love that you share that because it's such a breath of fresh air instead of all this, like, Hey, if you want to be perfect like me, just, you got to catch up and meet up and like measure up because all of us healthy people in the health industry, we got it all figured out. <laughs> yeah. So, well, probably, you. you know, like 40 hours a week and, and hundreds of thousands of dollars of my time and money are, are just spent just trying to help people. Like I don't, this isn't yeah, how I make money. Yeah. No, like, I actually make money on the ingredients and formulations yeah. and stuff. And it's just literally born out of, like I said, some people have saved my life. Yeah. And, and this is a passion for me. And I've, I've come close to uh, taking my life at different points. And I've also come close to feeling like I could be my best self and be one of the most incredible people on the planet, you know, and, yeah. and, and just unstoppable. And so yeah. I'm on that journey. And, and yeah. I would just want people to come with me and and I'm there to like answer any questions for anyone at any time. And like, there's people like I admire from a distance that, you know, I watch, like there's people that in one of my um, masterminds, they call them star fuckers that just want to, you know, <laughs> be around the people that, that can do their career so good. And like, that's where they focus the whole night, you know, and like when they're networking, 
But I see you taught me this like, word, Sean. You taught me this word, and I've told other people. I'm like, my friend Sean taught me this word. It's so I, good. <laughs> I see people like Rob Wolf. You know, like he'll sit there and talk like for an hour to someone that's just yes. some random person. And right, like Rob Wolf has no idea, like, um, you know, like how much I see that. Ah, uh, same. You know, like, that's what makes like, me just people, admire him so much. And I know, too. like, people, you know, see me and watch me too, and. And I think about that too. Like, you know, I want to set a good example and, and sometimes I don't. And, you know, sometimes I, I fall short and I know people, I've judged people like off of one situation and people probably judge me off of one situation, but, you know, hopefully my totality of work when I leave this planet is, is something that's a positive one. No, Sean, like I would say definitely one of the things that I've noticed about you is that you you have no ego. I would say you're probably one of the least judgmental people I've ever met because it's amazing to see you at these events and you, and you know, you've reached a certain level of success and here comes somebody who's like just starting. They've got like a thousand followers on Instagram and they want to be a health coach and they like don't know anyone. And you just make them feel like they're the most important person in the world that just walked into the room. And I know that makes such an impact on them and like completely changes them just like that, that one counselor did for you. So like, I see that in you and I see that in Rob and I'm interviewing Rob tomorrow. I see that in Mark Sisson. I'm interviewing Mark yes. Sisson on Monday. Same thing. That was the thing mm-hmm. that I've been impressed with all three of you at these, you know, events in the hallways. You're not too cool to talk to people. You're like, you know, Rob, I remember hearing him go, Hey, Hey, can you get her? Can you send her this, this, and this to somebody on his team, to some lady who needed help? And he's like, just giving her every resource he possibly has to help her, you know? And that to me is everything that says everything that I need to know. It's like, okay, when your heart is in a place where you're like, please, please, please let me help this person. Like you should be in the health industry. Yep. (laughs) We need more of those, you know? So uh, you're like that too, Sean. So I I see that in you and I appreciate that in you. And you know, I've, I, I haven't said this on the podcast or, but I've said in front of many friends and at events, you know, you and your wife, Shelly were there for me at a time in my life. Nobody else was. And I like, I like to share that because, you know, you're so busy. You're running like huge business. Shelly's got so much going on. I'm in Utah. You guys are in Texas. You got, you know, we're, we're friends, but you've got stuff going on in it. I mean, it must've been like a couple times a week, at least how you doing now? How you doing now? You know, Shelly went and visited my mom in her nursing home, like on the other side of the state from you guys. Like it's incredible. So that to me, like that's everything we need more of in the world. You know, I think we get very driven in personal development. Like I'm going to achieve this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And sometimes we lose the, like, what about them? What about everybody else? You know, and you guys got that. So I love to share that because I think it is so inspiring and so needed in the yeah, world right that, now. Uh, some, another shout out would be to L Russ. I know is a friend mm-hmm. of yours. Um, I love her. Uh, Chris Gethin is one of the sweetest guys on the planet too. And <laughs> yeah, I just, I, I love to give some Josh, uh, Trent, like there, there's some really Amazing good people, people out yeah. there, um, that you should definitely follow and, and, yeah. uh, that deserve your love. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Can we get into your brain a little bit? Yes. Brain. So. All right. Let's get into Sean's super smart brain. All right. So supplements. Yes. Um, let's start with, let's start with protein. Okay. What should people know about protein powders? What's the goods? Oh man. Uh, I was at Dimatize when like a lot of the uh, nitrogen spiking scams were coming to light. Wait, can where... you back up for a second for people who don't know? Can you explain yeah. who Dimatize is? Uh, there was probably like the number two protein maker on the planet behind optimum nutrition, um, sold for about $425 million to post foods like the cereal company. Oh, wow. Um, so, you know, ISO 100 is like probably one of their big, an an elite way or like their big uh, protein products. And, you know, we were doing it right. Optimum was doing it right. But there was so many companies in the industry that were doing what's called nitrogen spiking, where they'd add things that contain nitrogen that are cheaper than protein, because at the time, whey protein was skyrocketing in price. And so they were adding things like taurine and glycine and creatine And, you know, whatever, like some of these uh, ingredients or even like cheaper forms of protein, like at the time, collagen was so cheap. And so you'd see these these products that were like, 
you know, whey protein listed first potentially, but then there's this amino blend and there's this and that, and all these things were included. And of course they'd include like BCAAs in there to make it look good. Yeah. But I will have to explain, there's another scam that's called a a proprietary blend. Okay. So in the proprietary blend, you don't have to list your doses and it's in order of descending mass. So essentially like the first ingredient in those parentheses in this proprietary blend is what's most in terms of mass. Let's say it's something cheap. That's $4 a kilo like creatine. Great ingredient. I love it. Yeah. But it's cheap. Uh And then the very last ingredient might be leucine, which is, you know, $25 a kilo or whatever it is. And it's in there at one milligram. (laughs) <laughs> and you can do that. And oh so this gosh. was a huge scam. And we were trying to like do a pure way product and compete against these companies that were. Right. And so, by the way, how you calculate a protein is a really weird method where you lit- it's called like the Keldahl method, where you literally take the nitrogen grams and then you convert it like using this factor called 6.25, like if it's a whey protein. And so that's how like this whole thing got manipulated. Like you weren't actually like testing like pure amino acid levels and then total protein level and whatever. And then there was the question of if you're spiking extra amino acids that aren't inherent to the protein, is that still protein? Should that be counted the same way? Right. It was it was a mess. It was a complete <laughs> mess. So I will tell you, look for the clean label. Look for transparent labeling. The less ingredients, the better. You know, if it just says grass-fed whey, cool. <laughs> like, right. And then like stevia right. and flavor. Right. Cool. <laughs> like that's that's your protein. Like, yep. The That's ones what I that for. have like 40 ingredients, the <laughs> anabolic uh, shredder blend and blah, blah, blah. And it's got 40 ingredients. That's not your product. That is yep. a scam ass product. Wow. So uh, that's <laughs> one thing to know with proteins. The next thing I'd say that's important is like um, bioavailability and like something called PDCAAs, like uh, the protein digestibility. So like... Mm something like like whey protein is like around a hundred or even higher on this scale like whereas collagen is around a seven so collagen is a, a great protein again i take it every day like i'm not knocking any of these ingredients but it shouldn't be counted the same in terms of being anabolic for muscle and muscle right. building like whey protein or egg or beef or some of these quality anabolic sources that contain um, all the EAAs, essential amino acids, and BCAAs, which are part of the EAAs, the branch chain amino acids, which are really critical, especially leucine, Mm -hmm. which drives muscle protein synthesis. Right. And there basically is no leucine or BCAAs in collagen. Right. Now, collagen does have its own things as proline and hydroxyproline mm-hmm. and hydroxylysine, which helps build the connective tissue, which about right. a third of your body is this connective tissue glue. Right. Um, bone. It's not just like joints and tendons and, you know, things like that, like bone and uh, your gut lining, your skin. Right. Um, it, collagen is amazing. So I yes. actually do believe in taking a blend of something like a whey, depending if you're, you know, vegan or not, I can get into that, but taking whey and collagen, um, a blend like every day, I recommend with collagen, probably like a a lot, like 20 to 40 grams, because we don't Mm. eat bone and joints and ligaments and skin and tendons and things like that. Yeah. You know, what's so fascinating on that. I'm going to interject really quick because I just think this is so interesting. So my kids are a quarter Samoan. Okay. Their grandpa Mm -hmm. is from Samoa. And so my daughter is this little nerdy like me, like she loves to look stuff up and know information. Right. So (laughs) she's like the best kind of nerdy. Right. And so she's like, Hey mom, did you know that Samoans have the strongest bones of any 
like race, any population. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And instantly my head went to thinking of my ex-father-in-law, my husband's ex-husband's dad eating chicken. (laughs) <laughs> eating and eating any kind of animal. I mean, that thing was almost gone. Like all he would eat all of the cartilage, every little bit of connective tissue. It was like this little nut. He would even kind of gnaw on the ends of it. It was like a barely a bone left. And I thought, huh, there's God, I bet you anything. There's a connect, there's a connection there. And you always think of Samoans as being like these big, strong people. And I'm like, wow, I wonder if it's because they eat the whole animal like that. So anyway, just a little side note, because I think that well, is so important. Yeah. Also on top of that, uh, carrying around more skeletal mass and even adipose tissue can make the bone stronger, bone mineral density stronger. So like mm. the more weight the, the, the skeleton has to uh, maintain, uh, the stronger the bone has to become to uh, maintain it. That's so cool. it's kind of probably sense. twofold. Yeah. Uh, I would think Samoans do have a greater bone mineral density um, for sure. Yeah. Um, and I also, just on a side note, um, I read that col- they estimate that in your sixties, you have about half as much collagen as you did in your twenties. Half. So yeah. that's a high dose. You said 20 to 30 grams. 20 to 40. Yeah. 20 like, to 40 I, grams I, of collagen. Yes. Yes. Wow. I that. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, definitely a, getting a good source. Um, I think, you know, some of it, you know, you can get these ones that are if it smells weird, then it's probably uh, denatured. You know, if it really like is clumpy, smells weird, is too cheap, you know, like really good collagen is not cheap. Um, so I'll just say that. So like look into your sources, you know, read some reviews. Um, honestly, collagen can be pretty experiential. Like I've known a lot of people that when you dose it as high as I'm saying, like they notice within a week, they're like, wow, my skin's firmer. My skin's brighter. Like I, I don't feel that joint pain I was feeling except like your nails will yeah, you know, yeah. grow better. Your hair will be shinier and longer. Um, you'll notice your, you'll have less leaky gut issues. I mean, you will notice the difference. So for really sure. cool. Really cool. What about uh, like whey protein, you know, concentrates, isolates, any advice there for people? Yeah. The, that's an interesting one. And, and I, I can't decide which one I like better. Uh, isolate has less calories because it's isolated. Okay. So you're actually getting rid of the milk fat and the milk sugar, which is lactose. So if you're lactose intolerant, whey concentrate might be out. Yeah. Okay. But the less you process it, the more that there's growth factors and other things that are still inherent to the protein that are still there. So that can, that can actually be like a really good thing. And sometimes hydrolyzing a protein, it makes it faster so that, you know, that, that leucine level spikes faster. Maybe that's Mm -hmm. more anabolic, but you might be losing some, larger chain peptides that we don't know what they do. Like, so there's dipeptides like carnosine, there's tripeptides like glutathione, and there's um, peptides that are 20 amino acids long like growth hormone. And we, we don't know what all these various peptides do. And obviously what milk is supposed to do is grow a cow or, you know, if it's human milk, then grow a human. And it's really cool that there's, with lactose, there's glucose and galactose. That's a fast and slow sugar. With the proteins, there's whey and casein. That's a fast and slow protein. And there's different lipids that are in there. And this Mm -hmm. is literally meant to maintain life. And so Mm -hmm. it's fascinating. And like, um, because of like how often, um, you know, that species suckles to get the milk, you'll see like the ratio of whey to casein. So Mm -hmm. for example, like with us, we have the inverse ratio of a cow because like we're 80% whey uh, 20% casein because uh, we would suckle more frequently. Hmm. You know, we would have milk more frequently. 
uh, mm -hmm. versus a cow. So like a cow has to go longer periods between feeding. So it's really fascinating. Like it nature is. blows my mind. Like, yeah. so I think I lean heaviest towards like mess with it the least. Yeah. You yeah. know, cold filtered, grass fed, like New Zealand, whatever. Yeah. And I love like even like getting like some colostrum, yeah. not anything that's like first milking that would like, you know, hurt yeah. the, the potential cows. But, you know, like in that first 72 hours, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I think is really cool. Yeah. Right on. Thank you. Okay. What about uh, like pre-workouts? Can you enlighten us a little bit on your thoughts? And actually you can mention teacrine too, because that's yours. And I think that's yeah. interesting for people to know what teacrine is. Can you explain teacrine and then any other things for pre-workouts that you think might be helpful for people to know? Yeah. Teacrine and, and um, dynamine are two um, ingredients that I patented with uh, Dr. Hector Lopez and Dr. Tim Siegenfuss. Um, and they're in the methyl xanthine family, along with things like theobromine, theophylline, caffeine. Uh, they don't have the same um, uh, adaptation effect uh, that caffeine has. So it tends to work the same way every time. Whereas caffeine, you have to kind of take more and more and more just to get to, to the baseline. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and there's very different half-lives. Tea cream, uh, lasts a lot longer, uh, and dynamine is, is kind of more short acting, like a faster punch, similar to caffeine, but, uh, a little bit more experiential. So those are very popular, obviously in the pre-workout realm. Tons um, of supplements, guys. I see it all the <laughs> time. I'm like, oh, it's Sean's. I mean, they're in tons. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I mean, there's so many, it just depends like what your thing is. Like so for some people, like they need the stims, you know, to kind of get up. Um, some people like the, the, the pump and the blood flow kind yeah. of stuff, the nitric, uh, nitric oxide kind of stuff, which is, you know, things like citrulline and agmatine and, um, uh, things like that. Um, I love, uh, kind of the basics, like things like betaine, creatine, just things for, you know, strength and power. Um, I think those just make a lot of sense. They're tried and true. And, mm -hmm. and, and, um, and then I like some, you know, nootropics that are, you know, basic stuff like uh, alpha GPC uh, is one of my favorite forms of choline. It crosses the blood brain barrier and is just literally one of the best. Um, uh, those are probably, I mean, I keep it super simple. Yeah. Like, I, I like some of the, um, things like, uh, the adaptogens like rhodiola or ashwagandha, like they kind of eat, like if you're taking stems, they can kind of even out the stems and L-theanine would be another one that you could take to kind of, uh, take the edge off of, of stimulant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because I think sometimes people confuse like, uh, being amped up versus focused mm -hmm. and focused is actually like a clear calm present mind a connected mind right and things like like these nootropics can actually help and sometimes you do need like to get gassed up a little bit i get that but the combination is much better or at least leaning on these things that really help with that mind muscle connection or help with focus um, I think are ideal. Like I love fish oil. Not that that would be, you know, typically in a, in a pre-workout, but I think that should be there. And, and if you ha are having problems um, with, you know, vasodilation, then, you know, certainly taking things like, like citrulline, agmatine, um, things like that are going to help grapeseed extract, stuff like that. Okay. Thanks, Sean. All right. Let, that segues us a little bit. I just want to hit on, cause you are, I mean, biohacking is really, I feel like where you really stand out. I mean, we probably could have done this whole thing on biohacking and just blown everybody's minds. On, I mean, I remember the first time I heard you speak, you were talking about uh, fecal transplants and like, I think in the car right over, you were talking about like eating only raw meat and how that might be optimal. And like, I mean, you really, you really like love to experiment. So like, what's yeah. some of your favorite favorite, maybe your favorite tried and true, uh, biohacking concepts where you're like, Oh, this is so cool. And then what, like, what are you on to lately? Anything new? 
You know, honestly, the, the biggest ones for me, like that I, I really feel get overlooked and, and this concept that I've come up with is, is called biohacktivism, mm -hmm. like where, um, you know, hacktivism is like um, Julian Assange, Edward Snowden, Anonymous, these groups that hack for the social good, the greater good. Yeah. Like they care about like the impact, like they're not doing it for greedy purposes or for terrorism purposes. Um, and then biohacking, obviously, you know, hacking your biology. So I like this kind of mashup term, but, you know, biohacking is typically this N of one thing, like where like you care about like um, self quantification, like, yeah. like what's, what's my metrics? Like, how can right. I live longer? What's like, how do I get more out of me? Yeah. And I like the idea of how do I elicit a greater level of performance so I can be heads up and thriving yes. and I can achieve my purpose, my why, you know, like the Simon Sinek start with your why, like, and, and kind of the top of that, um, you know, pyramid of like um, self-actualization for Maslow like where you know what you're supposed to do and you're helping people right. with that purpose. Yep. And that's, you know, like when your head's up, like you see that person that's hurting like me that day, like that doctor did, you know, you, you hear that, you know, voice, you have the empathy, you have the energy that you can give away. Yep. And when you're in survival mode, when your head's right. down, you just don't have that energy. And right. so there's, there's a lot of hacks, but you know, what I was, I was doing at, at a time and I didn't realize this, there's a bucket uh, that you have to deal with stress. And um, with that bucket, like you can take in, you know, good stress and bad stress, you stress and distress. And it's called allostatic load, how big your bucket is. Hmm. And, you know, I was, I had a very small bucket. And it was constantly overflowing. Mm -hmm. And I was always trying to figure out the hacks, you know, to get a few more drops in or to make the bucket slightly larger, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But instead of working on bio resilience, I think resilience is, is mm -hmm. where we need to focus. Mm -hmm. uh, and mindset, you look at stoicism. And that's an idea of resiliency, like where the obstacle is the way. Instead of mm -hmm. you looking at like figures, fucking always happens to me. Like mm -hmm. what is always ha like? Sure, I'll, I'll think. You know, like people mm -hmm. are just like, that's that's my life. F, mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> FM, whatever. FM, yeah. Right, <laughs> like so. Like that's the way people start to think. Instead of like, wow, this is an opportunity. And that's what you start to get with like that mindset. But it's the same way on a physiologic level when you do like cold plunges and when you yep. do like, um, you know, high intensity interval training or blood flow restriction therapy yep. or keto or, you know, all these different techniques that that we talk about with biohacking, because I think a lot of biohackers can I have found be very unhealthy in the same way we were talking about before with entrepreneurs being very driven, they become driven by metrics and numbers and become mm -hmm. obsessed with these numbers mm -hmm. in a very unhealthy way. And I yeah. think if you don't tie it to that resilient mindset mm -hmm. where you make, um, you know, daily affirmations, meditation, mm -hmm. vision boards, uh, prayer, uh, grounding, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sunbathing, sun gazing, you know, forest bathing, whatever, like all these, mm -hmm. these things like, you know, reading and podcasts and just quiet time and yep. uh, yoga, or, you know, whatever, like doing these practices, if you're just like, you know what, I'm going to do my wind sprints and I'm going to do the cold plunge. And then like, you can, you can, again, that bucket can be overflowing, whether it's your body sometimes doesn't know whether it's the you stress or distress. Mm -hmm. It's just stress yep. in the buckets overflowing. So you can make a bigger bucket by working on resiliency. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is like when you, you know, are doing this with 
all these various things we're talking about, one can affect the other. Like the cold plunge can make your mind more resilient and the stoicism and that practice and the meditation can make you more resilient to the cold plunge. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, you know, not one without the other and, and resiliency. uh, I mean, if I go a step further, like then I love like studying mitochondrial health. Like that's Mm -hmm. probably one of my, my favorite things. And, and that's where, like, I think health is, is going big time. I think like the words you're going to hear, like Mito is going to replace keto and I think resiliency is going to be like the new strong. Mm-hmm. Like I think those those are the words that you're going to hear in in the next ten years. So mitochondrial health is is everything, mm-hmm. and and I believe like we could really fix the state of medicine if we just looked at three simple labs, maybe quarterly, you know, twice a year. If we looked at uh, hemoglobin A1C for glycation, blood sugar damage. Uh, if we looked at CRP, C-reactive uh, protein for uh, inflammation, and we looked at oxidized LDL for oxidation, there's some other ones I could look at too, like um, LPA, uh, lipoprotein A for um, cardiovascular health and vitamin D levels and there's, there's a few other things that I might look at too, but just those three things, like I could really tell you the state of your mitochondria and your likelihood of getting practically any disease that's just not inborn genetic. And literally that's, that's like the, the cause of biological aging and, and mitochondrial dysfunction leads to glycation, oxidation, inflammation, leads to aging, leads to disease. And we could be ahead of Alzheimer's, cancer, Parkinson's, uh, coronary heart disease, on and on and on, biological aging. Mm -hmm. If we were just looking at these, but we're not, you know, we're looking at hemoglobin A1C once you're diabetic. We're looking at CRP, like once you have uh, heart disease and you have, you know, inflammation. And, and it's frustrating to me that we're not looking at these things kind of proactively. Yeah. And, and we could really change the shape of medicine if we were looking at mitochondrial health. And it's one of the reasons that keto works so well, because most people are insulin resistant and therefore they're in a state of insufficient cellular energy, which is an acronym called ICE. And you're going to hear about it more and more and more. And this is what's leading to the mitochondrial dysfunction, leading to the inflammation, glycation, oxidation, leading to this autoimmune issues like I had, like the body's chugging, like we don't have enough energy to do yep. this shit you're telling us to do. Yep. Where do we get this energy? Well, either you need to be like the rest of the world that eats carbs and eat whole food, healthy carbs, be active, fast, uh, you know, eat sometimes like meats, like through the winter, you know, whatever, and have resistant starches and all the things that they're doing right. It's not the same. Nope. And that's why in this Western culture where we're, you know, having ultra processed, uh, highly engineered foods that override satiety yep. that uh, are high glycemic carbohydrate combined with high fat that we're, and we're sedentary and there's no fiber or resistant starch and, and we're rarely keto. And by the way, keto isn't, isn't a diet. Keto isn't even a lifestyle. Keto is another fuel that up until probably 20 years ago, 50% of the time we were using. Boom. <laughs> Thank and it's you. only recently mm-hmm. that we've become ketone resistant. It's oh. only recently. <laughs> I love it. Ketone and resistant. So, so true. So, can you explain? Can you explain why? Explain like how how that works. Why are we not? You're saying because we are eating such an abundance of carbohydrates and we're so sedentary, we just don't allow the time for our bodies to run out of the incoming glucose and use it up and then just switch into ketosis naturally. Yes. Well, yeah, it's several things. So like these, these ultra processed foods are high glycemic. 
and high fat. So that means they're high calorie and that fat is also being spiked with uh, insulin and you're not going to like go into lipolysis. You're going to go into fat storage. Mm -hmm. Then you have, you don't have the fiber or resistant starches that are feeding the gut that are lowering the glycemic index. Right. And we're sedentary and we're not like upregulating our glute four uh, um, receptors for translocation of glucose into the cell. Then we're, uh, you know, overstressed in the sympathetic nervous system. I mean, I have too much cortisol and, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, then, I mean, it, it just keeps going on and on. Like, and yeah. we're not having, um, you know, enough whole foods that break down as slowly right. and we're not fasting as much. Yep. And, you know, and then our serving sizes are completely out of control. Like when yep. I was a kid and I would go to McDonald's, you know, it would be like, the adult meal was like, is what's now for like a six-year-old. Yep. And the, the adult meal is like an absurd, like biggie, ultra size, like super size <laughs> that, like yeah, it's yeah. a quadruple patty with like, right. you know, blah, blah, blah. and it's just out of control. Yep. Like, and this is the reason, like we can't deal with all this and it's just completely unhealthy. And, and I can't even get into like how many chemicals are in the environment and right. I don't know the impact of all that, the glyphosate and, and all the, I mean, literally yeah, the number yeah. of chemicals in the environment is, uh, you know, exponential. So who knows what the impact of, of all these things are? We don't study that. We don't know that. I mean, I'm mm-hmm. not Mr. Conspiracy theorist, but I don't <laughs> know what 5G does to our bodies. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say like, oh, it's yeah. going to kill you the second you walk out the door. I don't right. know. That's but at the I same am. time. I know it can penetrate brick. So you think it's not going to penetrate my skin? Right. It's like, I don't know. I don't know what the impact of that is. And people that make a lot of money off all these chemicals and these different things, they're not going to put out real good data just like cigarettes. So I don't know the truth to tell you, but, you know, that's, that's the big reason why, you know, we don't get into ketosis like we used to. And we're just so, uh, you know, glucose driven and then we become insulin resistant, glucose intolerant. Yeah, man. You made me think of, um, so I have a guy that does my videos, right? And he's from Latvia. He's awesome. His name's Walter. So Walter comes over to do some of my keto recipe videos and he's not keto and he, you know, he's thin naturally. And Mm -hmm. he came and he, he's like, I didn't eat all day so I could enjoy all this food, you know? And he has no reason to like fast except that he wanted to enjoy the food right? He wanted to work up his appetite so that it was delicious. And then he would just have little bits and pieces. He wasn't like, like going bananas on all the food. He was just really savoring it. And I asked him one time, you know, um, he was like, it's funny. He's learning a lot about keto and nutrition just from working with me. And he's like, he's like, it's funny, all this stuff that you guys talk about, like pasture raised and local and organic. He's like, in Latvia, that's that's just (laughs) <laughs> that's the only option. Like it's not special, you know? Yeah. Um, and, um, and he, I would, he was like, no one's really overweight in Latvia. And I was right. like, why do you think that is? Do you think it's because of that food quality? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, we just don't eat that much. And I was like, why do you think people don't overeat? And I was thinking he might say, oh, cause we don't have all these like scientifically engineered foods and it's real food. And he goes, <laughs> I just loved his answer so much. He goes, I guess it just never occurred to us. <laughs> to overeat. It just never occurred to us, you know? And I thought, wow, like without all this, you know, pushing it in your face from fast food industries and buffets and more and more and more and money, you know, money is what caused it all. It's like when you're just think about it, if all you had in your fridge was like potatoes and meat and broccoli and (laughs) you would just, you really wouldn't be overeating that much. Right. So I just, I don't know, you're, what you're saying there reminded me of that. It's like a glimpse. What he's explaining in Latvia to me was like a glimpse of how it could be or how it should be, you know, it's taste of reality that's so different than what we've experienced because of this environment. Like you said, what the last 20, 30 years, all of a sudden we as human beings right now find ourselves in a bit of a predicament. Has anybody noticed? <laughs> and it's because of all those things that you just mentioned. So Yeah. And you know, I travel the world and, and the same thing happened to me. Like when I was in Iceland, we were asking at the grocery store for organic and all that. And they're like, <laughs> They looked at us like we were crazy. And again, that's all they had. 
And I do notice that, like, you know, I've spent time in Sardinia, which is one of the blue zones. I go there quite often. Cool. Uh, I have a family friend there. And um, and it'll be like three hours of eating. Yeah. But it's like once a day. And it's and it's like a it's a time to relax. Yeah. And I think you can't you can't devalue like being in the parasympathetic nervous system state when you have food, right. when they drink wine, when they eat food, they are relaxed. They're laughing, right. they're sharing, they're caring. Yep. When we're eating, we're in our car with the music up, we're shoving it in our face. <laughs> we need to get to this place. Yeah. And we're always in the sympathetic nervous system. And don't think that your body doesn't have psychosomatic connections where it doesn't know the difference. Meaning right. that when you eat food in Sardinia, you relax. Meaning that when you eat food in America, you stress. Wow. I'm not just saying that you're stressed when you're eating food. I'm saying the food can then become a stressor. Whoa. Because your body's hardwired like that. Yeah. Or it doesn't know the difference. Wow. Great point. I've actually been doing one meal a day for quite a while, like since coronavirus virus started. I'm loving it, but it's more like what you said. It's not like I just go have like one bowl of chicken salad. You know, it's like for about three to four hours is kind of how I look at it. From It's like ex- a little bit more extreme intermittent fasting between 12 and four. Sometimes it's only like 12 to one and sometimes it's like drawn out and I'm just slowly like I'm enjoying time with my kids and I'm just, you know, feasting and relaxing like that. And um, I've even noticed like I went, I had a, I had a date. <laughs> and so I, I pushed my, my one meal to, to the dinner and it was like that. It was like a very slow dinner with wine and I, it was a fine dining restaurant. So it was like barely any food. You know what I mean? It's like this little teeny rectangle of fish. I was so full. I was so full because it was so slow. We had a little appetizer and the wine and that's all I needed. And I was like, wow. So I love what you're saying there. Cause I, even when I lived in Spain, you know, Spain is really good about this too with siesta. Like that's a real thing. And we would just sit around for hours and eat a very small amount of food and just enjoy it, you know, and just have human connection. Yeah. When I go to China, I mean, just think about like the chopsticks versus the shovel that we use. I mean, the, the chopsticks right. slow down too, right? True. And, um, you know, in, in Italy and Sardinia, like, you know, it's almost like Spain with like the tapas. Like, I was surprised like where we like literally w- would have like seven, eight, nine courses, it, like seemed like an absurd amount of food. But because I was so relaxed right, and I actually was sleeping better and I think I literally doubled my caloric intake, no joke, <laughs> which was crazy. I lost weight while I was there. Yep. Yep. I was the I had never, never been. felt so relaxed. <laughs> yeah. And just, you know, at ease. Like it was mm-hmm. just an enjoyable, like they enjoy the company, the experience, the yep. talking, the the what's next to come out. Like right. you know, it's like it's round after round and it's fun and it's it's just so enjoyable. And yeah. Um, that's it's just a totally different experience. Yeah. And you hit on something that, you know, even here in the U S I, I, I teach this to my clients and I tell them have, I, I, I found this myself. I'm like, it works. I promise. I would have a prayer of gratitude after my meal. As I finished my meal, I would say, Oh my gosh, that was so amazing. And even if it was something bad, right? Even if it was cake or a treat or an indulgence, having that mindset of like, oh my gosh, I shouldn't be eating this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Oh, I shouldn't have any more. I'm going to have more. You're never grateful. And so you never feel satisfied. But if you can just actually sit down and enjoy the whole piece and taste it in your mouth and say, oh my gosh, that was amazing. It makes a such, it makes such a difference on your satiety level afterward. You are so full. So uh, anybody listening, I'm challenging you, try that. The next time you eat something, I want you to be like, "Mm, wow, that was amazing. And you will literally feel your stomach get more full. And that's what I'm hearing. They're like, they're welcoming it. It's abundance. It's gratitude. It's like, ooh, yes, enjoy the food. And you literally get more full that way instead of scarfing some giant bowl. Because I've been there, definitely, right? You're calorically restricting and you're like scarfing your egg scramble and you're like, oh, this is all I get, you know? And you just feel starving after words, even though you're technically full, like your stomach can technically be full, but you mentally feel starving because you didn't have that moment of gratitude. 
Yeah, one of the techniques I was taught as an RD and, and I was in school uh, with, with obesity and trying to get control over that is, um, is literally putting your fork down between bites. Yeah. And then, and like you're saying, like savoring it and yeah. really thinking about the flavor and, and it gets you to like start cutting down also on like over flavoring food. Like yeah, start thinking about like, even like a green garden pea without like butter yeah. or cheese or whatever has like a little bit of a sweetness and a, and a certain flavor. Right. And, like, and like, you can just think about that. And like you said, have gratitude for that, that that came from the earth and the sunshine yep. and the water and, and yeah. it's nourishing you now. And that's so cool. Yeah, I love that. Sean, I won't keep you any longer. Thank you so much. We could geek out on health all day, all night. Thank you so much for sharing time with us today. I know you're very busy and it's such a gift to hear your soul. I think everybody, as you come out more and more, it's like, oh my gosh, yes. So thank you so much for doing this today. Thank you. I'm a huge Tara Garrison fan. And, <laughs> Thanks, uh, Sean. and I really appreciate you having me on and I'm here to help you in any way I can. And people can check me out on my website, yes. uh, seanwells.com. I have tons of guides on there that are free, uh, that are cited, like five to 10 pages on keto, on fasting, on mushrooms, vitamin C, all kinds of things. And then, yeah, follow me at Ingredientologist on Instagram and obviously follow Tara Garrison and just just lift up the good people out there that are trying to do good things. And um, and Absolutely. We'll have a better place. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Sean. Love you so much. Love you. Thank you.